Good evening. This is me, Spud Spudding. Today we're going to be learning how to play Out on the Tiles um, by... Um, who is it by? I forgot. Oh well, we'll figure it out. Just a quick little fact for all you ZEP addicts out there, especially the American ones. Out on the Tiles was only ever included in Zeppelin's set list during their sixth North American tour, Autumn 1970. On the other hand, during their 77 American tour, the beginning of the song was integrated into Over the Top as the launch pad for John Bonham's epic 20 minute drum solo. This introductory riff also served as the opening of the live version of Black Dog and was later resurrected during Page and Plant's world tours, 95, 96, and 98. Page also performed the song, The Black Crows, during their 99, 2000 tour. Remember, if you want the tab or the guitar profile for this lesson or any of my other lessons, consider checking out my Patreon. You can click the link in the top corner or in the description below, and I would appreciate the support. And if you do end up liking this video and you want to come back and see some more, make sure you hit like, subscribe, and the bell next to it to be notified when I upload. Let's get to it. For a few of the lazy page fans out there, you'll be pleased to know that this song, mm -hmm. okay, it's in standard tuning. There's no solo, but it's got some badass riffs in it. Makes up for it, doesn't it? So we're gonna start with this little descending octave riff. Index finger on the third fret of the E, the note G, and then pinky on the fifth fret of the D, also the note G. Now the index finger drapes over the A string in a way that the pad is muting it and the underside of my pinky is also catching the G and the B. Now whilst you might get some kind of like collateral harmonics here, when you start strumming the octave, that all fades into the background and just keeps you playing tidy. So I like to just do eight downstrokes here. It gives it a real driving push. You're simply going to move that down one fret to the F sharp. Exactly the same rhythm. Now we're going to grab an open A5 power chord, index finger bar in across the second fret of the D and the G, A in the bass, and then I grab the G sharp on the low E string, fret four, with the third finger. I back it up with the second, extra little bit of strength and support and I bend that upper semitone back to the A, which was the original root of our power chord. Some people like to take that G in the bass and bend that upper tone, but I feel like the G sharp makes more sense. The album before Black Dog as well, and you might have seen that video where Zeppelin kind of teased the audience. They play just the intro to Out on the Tiles and then um, go into Black Dog. You want to hit the G? Hit the G. You want to hit the G sharp? You with me? Now, the main riff. So we've got two variations of this riff and it opens with an F sharp major arpeggio. Root third, fifth, root. 
but we're just going to tweak the fingers that we use to play it. So we start on that F sharp with our second finger. Index finger going to the major third above that. And then I use my second finger again to hit that perfect fifth, which is the fourth fret of the A string. And then I use my third finger for the octave on the fourth fret of the D. And the reason I like to use my third here is that I can back it up with the second and the index finger um, to get that vibrato to match the track. If I use my pinky, I feel like it gets in the way of the third finger changing strings. So that's my reasoning there. Also, you kind of hear some harmonic overtones on that octave. So uh, sometimes I try and catch a little pinched harmonic just to spice things up. If you want to make it a little bit more exciting. Then we have this descending pattern. It's really important here that we start on an upstroke as we alternate our picking because when you get down to the F sharp at the start again, you will naturally land on a downstroke. So the notes, index finger on the first fret of the D, alternating between the second fret back and forth. Finishing on the fourth fret of the A string with the pinky. And then we have a very similar thing, but this time on the A string, open A to the second fret. We just exit a little bit early there because we're now going to go 2, 3, 2, 0. Oh. And then back to the start again. Now for the variation on the third repeat, it starts exactly the same. So the opening arpeggio is the same. Next part's the same. But now we're going to change our alternating notes to the second and the fourth fret of the A string with the index and the third finger. Make your way down to the fifth fret of the E string, the note A, and then alternate between the fourth and the fifth fret. Now you could just end on the fifth fret of the E string, which is the note A, like I just said. But I actually like to substitute that for the open A. The tone is just a little bit brighter and it gives you a breath to change to the power chord as opposed to holding that A and then having to quickly move that finger over to hit the power chord. So you can decide what you want to do there, but I think the open A is brighter, nicer, and a little bit more practical. So these power chords here, it's just an F sharp five and an E five. And we're just gonna alternate between the two in this rhythm. And then you straight back into your riff. Just goes around again. Go and brew up, get yourself a beer. Get me one as well while you're right. Next section.
This section is pretty straightforward. It's just two chords repeated, E and A. You can use power chords like me or the major chords if you're feeling a smidge more happy. And then it's just a couple of other sections repeated, um, but we already know them, so that's good. Let's take the E power chord that I'm playing, seventh fret of the A string, and then I use my pinky to bar the perfect fifth and the octave. And then the open A power chord, we've already played that today, it's just second fret of the D and the G and the open A and the bass. Now the picking pattern, we're gonna alternate the root, down up, down up. I put a little bit of palm muting in there just to give the bottom end a little bit of tightness, a little bit of chunk. It's my favorite saying at the moment. And it helps differentiate between the kind of more heavily accented strum of the power chord, which is the next thing we do. And then we hit the root note again a couple more times. This is a really useful shape live because if there's anybody that you don't like on the front row, you can permanently flip them off um, and get away with it. So after you've played that once, we're gonna slide down to the A5 power chord and you're gonna do two repeats of the same rhythm. And then come back up to the E. So it's going E, A, A, E. It's really important to understand form and structure and uh, sometimes visualize how it would look written out like that, especially when the first and the last chord are the same, because that can get confusing and sometimes you'll end up missing one out by accident. So it's E, A, A, E, E, A, A, E. So in the middle there, we've got four repeats of our A power chord with the semitone bend. And then you're gonna come back to that E section again, two more repeats. Same thing again, we're gonna do four repeats of our A power chord with the semitone bend. Straight into our octaves, G and F sharp, as we did before. Four repeats again of the A power chord with the semitone bend. And then we've got our octaves again one more time. And this time, we've got three repeats of our A power chord with the semitone bend, just like we had at the start of the song. because that's our looping point. We're going back to the start, to the main riff. Ooh, segue. Out on the tiles, which like Immigrant Song has no solo, something of a rarity for Led Zeppelin, ends with a relatively long outro of more than 30 seconds duration, giving Plant an opportunity to indulge in some improvisation while Bonham's Ludwig pans from side to side from three minutes. So here we've got three power chords, E5, seventh fret of the A, G5, 10th fret of the A, and A5, 12th fret of the A. I've now opted to use index third and fourth fingers because it gives me a little bit more um, precision, clarity when I'm moving them around. So to make sure we get maximum fluency here, we wanna make sure the right hand never breaks stride and it's always going up and down, up and down. You bring it to the strings when you wanna strike them, okay? So our first rhythm on the E is down, down, up, and then you move to the G5 on the 10th fret and we hit down. You'll notice that my right hand's still moving, like I said, even when I'm not striking the strings. So after that G, we come back down to the E and we're gonna go up, 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 down. And on that last down, we're gonna go back to the G. Now, for the second variation, it's identical rhythmically, we just change the order of the chords. 
first part's the same, but for the last three chords, same rhythm, but we go E up to A, down to G. And then you just repeat them back to back. I had loads of requests to do a lesson for this song. Patreon, YouTube comments, Instagram. So if you did like this video, go ahead and hit that like button down below, please. It makes a huge difference in throwing these videos out into the algorithm and bringing in more views and subscribers. Helps grow the channel. Speaking of subscribers, don't forget to hit the subscribe button and the bell next to it to be notified the very next time that I upload a video. If there were some parts that confused you and you were like, what was he saying? You can always rewind, pause, take it slower. But if you're absolutely fried and you want the tab, head over to my Patreon and we can have a little chat. Huge community of very cool people over there, all very nice. And I sit right at the top of the pyramid. Thanks for slamming the door, Gab. I sit right at the top of the pyramid and uh, I'm the nicest of them all. Just before I go, check this out. Getting the decorations out last night, wasn't I? Christmas stocking, present in there, unopened. Turns out it's for you guys. Do you want it now or later? Now, all right. <laughs>